In the previous module, we created a schematic library consisting of multiple symbols. In this module, we will learn to create a PCB footprint library consisting of the corresponding footprints. Like the symbols, these footprints can be created manually from the ground up or automatically using a wizard. They can also be copied from an existing PCB footprint library or from a PCB document. We will then associate our existing symbols with the corresponding footprints to make up a unified component. To start, we will want to have a fresh environment. Close any open documents or projects. All library files can be created from the File, New, Library menu. We will choose to create a new PCB footprint. Within this editor, the PCB library panel on the left shows the list of footprints within the library. Before we start creating or editing a footprint, we should create a workspace where we will set the appropriate grids and units. Grids can be set by hitting the G key on the keyboard. The current grid size will then be shown on the bottom left corner of the environment. To modify the grid display options, let's first ensure that nothing is selected in the workspace. We will then open the Properties panel. Double-clicking on the Global Board Snap Grid will open as Properties, where we can change its color and dot or line display. Generally, a light color is chosen to provide a great contrast. Within the Properties panel, we can toggle the units between imperial mils and metric millimeters. When we are in this panel, we can also hit Control Q to toggle between the units. However, when we are within the editor, hitting just the Q key will toggle the units. After setting up the workspace, we will define the footprint's properties. By default, we should have a blank component created within this new library called PCB component underscore one. Double click on it to open its properties. In here, we can change its name to something meaningful, such as cap underscore 0805. We can then define its height and description for completeness. On a non-standard component, such as fasteners, logos, or external jumpers, its type can be defined from this pull-down menu. It's important to note that if these non-standard types are used, it will affect the behaviors of the components when performing a design transfer from the schematic PCB, the bill on materials, or its electrical properties in the PCB document. Let's start creating the footprint by using objects that can be placed from either the place menu or the active bar. We will start by placing pads. Like in other editors, we can hit the tab key prior to placement to open its properties. Here, we can define the pad designator. Remember that pins and symbols are mapped to its corresponding footprint pad through designators by default. So let's make its designator as one. We can also define its layer. For surface mount pads, choose to place it on either the top or bottom outer layers. For through hole pads, choose to put it on the multi-layer. Notice that when multi-layer is selected for the pad, there will be an additional pane in this panel for its hole definition. We will revert to choosing the top layer and define its shape as rectangular. We will then set its X and Y sizes. At this point, we can hit Control Q to toggle between units so that we can easily plug in numbers based on what's provided in the datasheet. Paste mask and solder mask expansions are usually left to be governed by the rules in the PCB document when the footprint is placed. Usually, I would place the pad on the reference point and have the other pads reference this first pad. Once all the pads are placed, we can always reset the reference point to either pad 1, center of pads, or a specific location. First, while pad 1 is on the cursor, we can jump to the reference point pressing J and then R and then hit enter to place the pad on the reference point. The next pad should be brought onto our cursor. 
We use the delta coordinates from the last mouse click in the heads up display to get to the position that we require for the subsequent pad. As an alternative, we can also hit J followed by L to jump to a specific coordinate in reference to pad 1 since it was placed on the reference point. Once we have placed the two required pads, we can exit the placement mode. As mentioned earlier, its reference point can then be reset by going to Edit, Set Reference. The point can be set to either pad 1, center of the existing pads, or on a specific location. We will choose to set it at the center of the two pads in this case. In addition to this, we can also place primitives on mechanical layers or silkscreen layers as required by company specifications or regulations. 3D bodies can also be drawn directly onto this footprint. While on this mode, hitting the tab key would allow us to choose its type from either simple extrusion, cylinder, or sphere. Let's choose a simple extrusion and define its overall height and standoff. Then we can simply draw the shape that makes up the extrusion. Note that we can hit the shift spacebar to toggle through the line placement modes, such as 45 degree, 90 degree, or either of them with an arc. Right click to complete the polygonal shape. Viewing this in 3D mode confirms that we have successfully created a 3D body. We can also place step models on a footprint. We will delete the 3D body and perform another 3D body placement. These models are generally obtained from the manufacturer's website, community forums like 3D Content Central, or the mechanical team. During placement, the 3D body can be rotated to the correct orientation using the Properties panel or shortcuts that you can view when hitting the tilde key. Note that designated strings are automatically added to the footprint's silkscreen layer during placement into the PCB document. However, additional designators or comment strings can be included by placing the dot designator or dot comment special strings on the mechanical layer. Up to this point, we have seen the first method to create a footprint, which is from the ground up. We can also make use of the IPC compliant footprint wizard to create a footprint, which can be accessed from the tools menu. This wizard uses dimensional information from the component itself and then based on formulas developed for IPC 7351 standards, the wizard generates footprints using standard Altium Designer objects, such as pads and tracks. The packages supported in the wizard are listed here, including BGA, QFN, SOIC, or TSOP. Since we would like to create a corresponding footprint for a microcontroller symbol created earlier, Using the symbol wizard, we will choose TSOP. Within this window, we will plug in the dimensions as provided by the datasheet. A 2D and 3D preview will be shown in the bottom right. To create a true 3D body instead of a simple extrusion, click on Generate a Step Model Preview. Notice that the footprint will now have proper 3D objects, such as gold wing leads and the pad 1 indentation. We will continue setting up the wizard with the necessary requirements. We can then define the board density in which this footprint will be used. Based on the board density level, the least nominal and maximal material rule will apply when the footprint is created. We will choose medium density to produce a footprint using nominal material conditions. At the end of the wizard, we can also choose to export the 3D model as a step or parasolid file if needed.
Footprints can also be copied from a PCB document. Let's perform a file open and open the spirit level document from the examples folder. If you would like to copy the LCD footprint to our library, we can select it, then right click on it, and click copy. Right click anywhere in the footprint to set the copy reference point. Next, we will continue to the PCB library and right click on the footprints list in the PCB library and select paste. This footprint will now exist as a copy within our library along with its properties. Copy and paste can also be carried between PCB libraries. Note that if a PCB library is to be created from an existing PCB document, the command design make PCB library can be executed. This command will perform a copy and paste of every footprint in the PCB document into a PCB library, which can then be saved. Let's now save this PCB library to our desktop by going to File Save As. Once it is saved, we will open the Components panel and click on the button with the three bars. We will then choose File Based Library Preferences. Under the Install tab, we will click on Install and browse for the newly created PCB library. Now that we have created and installed the PCB library, let's associate the previously created symbols with the corresponding footprints. We will open the schematic library created in the previous module. Let's start with the capacitor symbol. In the model association pane at the bottom of the editor, we will click on Add Footprint. We will click on Browse and look for its corresponding footprint in the PCB library created and saved earlier. The PCB library option pane below shows the library which this footprint will be sourced from when performing a design transfer from schematic to PCB. If the Any option is chosen, it will search for the footprint that has the matching name in all currently available libraries. If there are multiple footprints with matching names, it will be based on the order of the libraries in the installed libraries list. If the library name or library path is chosen, it will search for the footprint of matching name from within the named library only. It is recommended for either the library name or library path option to be used, especially when working with passives or generic footprint names, which can be duplicated in multiple installed libraries. First, let's choose library name and browse for the footprint again. Let's repeat the steps for the microcontroller and the LCD. Save the schematic library and close all documents and projects. Now we will return to basics and create a new project on the desktop. Add a schematic and PCB document and save the project. We will place the three symbols we created. Then we will perform a design transfer to the PCB document. We can then view the footprints in both 2D and 3D mode. Let's close all the projects without saving anything. In this module, we saw how a PCB footprint library can be created. Within it, we created footprints using various methods. We then associated our existing symbols with corresponding footprints and placed the unified components in a project. In the next module, 
we will learn to create an integrated library where all sourced libraries are compiled into a single portable file.